Today I'm going to be showing you some of the accessories that I've added into the messy shed to fill up that main um, work area along there. So not so much as a tutorial video but hopefully I'll give you a few tips and a bit of inspiration of little bits and pieces that you can add into your own messy shed. Okay, let's get started. So I just want to start by doing a little display on the bench here. I'm just going to take this stool out for a moment. And I thought I'd use this clock and sort of put it on there as though it's being repaired. So I'm going to start by putting a piece of newspaper on there. I've got one left from the ones I printed off um, for the decorating table over here. So I'm going to start by sticking that in place. And it's quite difficult getting the camera in the right um, position for doing things inside the shed just because there's not a lot of room in there. So I'll sort of talk to you as I do it and then I can zoom in and show you what I've done at each stage. But it's basically just a question of me going through all my sort of collection of miniatures and just coming up with ideas of little things to put in here. Oops. So I'm just starting by gluing that newspaper together and then I sort of want it hanging over the edge of the work surface, sort of over there. I'm maybe going to fold it in half again as well, but not neatly. Sort of have it like that. Maybe have it that way like that. I like how it's overlapping the little tool tidy there. And then the clock can sort of go on there with a few pieces around it. So I'll just stick that newspaper in place. I was just checking to see if I'd actually stuck that little tool tidy down, and I have. I can't remember doing that. So that's there like that, and I'll just get a little bit more glue on my card. So I'm just going to stick that clock at a bit of an angle there. Like that. Get underneath the bench and just press that down. And then I just found here, and I don't know if sort of clocks have parts like this in them or not, but like some little, um, I think this might have even been a bead originally, some little spacer beads, some little sort of brass pieces, and then a little sort of bit of brass um, tube I cut off. And I've also got here a couple of eyelets. So these would be used in um, electrical wiring for doll's houses. And I just thought they might look like little pieces that come out of the inside of a clock. So I'm going to sort of glue these around in front of the clock. But I'm going to have to grab my tweezers to do that. And it doesn't really matter where these go, so I'm just going to sort of push them down wherever they land, really. And I quite like the idea that somebody's maybe been having a go at repairing a clock and then obviously just given up and left it there on the bench. I was trying to prop that bit up on the first bit, but it's not going to go, so I'm just going to push it beside it like that and press down. And I'm just using my Gorilla Wood Glue here, which will dry clear, so once that's dried you won't be able to see that on there. That goes there. Let's get these out of the little packet. And I just sort of put that so it's standing up like that. And I'm sure any, if anybody out there is a real clock mender, you'll be saying, well, there's nothing like that inside a clock, but it's just to sort of represent the workings of a clock. <laughs> and I'm going to lay that one down beside. 
inside it. And then I just want to show you something here that I've actually had in my collection for a while. And they're sort of silver, um, some sort of connector. And it looks like a tiny little um, spray can. That's why I kept them. I think I'll just show you if they or sort of how they join together like that. So I don't know where these come from or how I've come to have them in my collection. But I think I've said to you before, if I ever see anything that looks vaguely like something else, I always just keep it. Where did that go? And just stick it into a, a little box. So actually thinking about it, that does look like a little spray can, so I might make a little label to go on there, like a little WD-40 label, and then stick that on there, um, as if that's being used as well. So I'll just I'll take that out for a moment, and I'm going to make a label to go on there. I just found a tiny little gold bead as well that I've just stuck at the front there. And then I've just printed off my WT40 label. So I just found an image of a, a can um, using Google Images. Saved that as a JPEG and then opened it in Photoshop. Made a blue background by picking up the colour um, of the blue there. I don't know if you use Photoshop or not, but you've got like a little dropper tool which you can pick up a colour with. So I did that. And then transferred the image onto that blue background, that's just so that the blue will wrap all the way around. And then just resized it to 9 millimeters high. And you only have to do the one um, resizing measurement. And I'm trying to think of the name of the little box. I think it's called Constrain Image Size. So if you do it um, sort of 9 millimeters high, it will automatically go to the width of the image that you're, you're resizing. And I wanted to make a little red, um, they have like a little red tube on, don't they, which you use as the um, little sprayer or to get it into sort of tiny places. I thought I could use a piece of red paper clip, but it was far too thick, so I'll just have to leave that off. And then I've also done a little um, spray paint can, which I want to put on top of the little tool tidy in there. I think they work really good as um, little spray cans, don't they? So if anybody can tell me what they are, I might try and get hold of some more. I know it's some sort of connector, but I, like I say, I don't know where it came from. Okay, so I've also just wiped around the edge of the wood dye tin with a little bit of cloth. And I'm going to put that next to the clock as well. So there's the little cloth in place and if you put sort of quite a bit of glue on and then just you can just sort of shape it and all these little creases and things will just dry in and then I just want to glue the little um, tin of WD-40 just beside that I hope I'm not making you motion sick sort of moving the camera around like that like I say, it's quite difficult to get into. So I'll just bring that in with my tweezers and it's got a hollow bottom so I've just sort of put the glue around the outside. Where should I put it? Should I try and get it in there? That looks quite good. Just press that down. And always sort of rely on your glue because like that feels as though it's not sticking, but I know when I come back to that, that will be stuck. It's just because I'm sticking metal to a piece of cloth, so it will take longer for the glue to actually take. just wanted to move in a little bit closer there and just show you that little scene. I quite like that. 
See so another just really simple little scene. Only a couple of miniatures involved. And you again you've got like a little story going on there. Right, so I'll stick that other um, tin on the top of the little tool cabinet there. So that's up there. And then I'll have a think about something else to put on top of that little tool tidy thing. And then I just now want to concentrate on that area um, beneath the desk. So if I just pop that back there where it goes, I've got that sort of um, clear area in there. So I've just made a crate, really simple, just as you'd make a drawer, attach the sides to the base and then a front and back. And I've just made it so the front and back is just slightly taller. And I scored grooves as well in the front and back pieces. And then I've used wood dye to colour that. And that will sit underneath there and at a bit of an angle as well. But before I put that in place, I've got these 124 scale stair rods, I think, or newel posts rather. I'm just going to glue those into place under there, just to add a little bit of colour behind that stool. I don't know how these are going to go, but let's just put a bit of glue on and then we'll position them. Just put glue on the bottom and on one side. Just trying to feel if that's actually sticking to something, and it is. It's just sticking to that bit of corrugated iron at the back there. And I've just put my finger in the glue. So let me bring that round there. And then we'll stick this one to the first one. Glue on the base and then just a bit on the back there. Just push that in there. And you can't really see them but you can still see that there's something sort of behind the stool rather than just a, a blank area. And then, let me bring you around. I've been going through my box of bits again. And if you watch my Doll's House Diary, you'll see that I removed some pictures that were up going up the stairs. So I've kept the frames and I want to put those in this box and one of the little light switches as well. I've got a couple of metal stair rods here, again just surplus to the ones I fitted um, in my doll's house. And I've also got a couple of finger plates, again surplus to the ones I fitted to the doors. So I'm going to put those in. And if you remember in an earlier episode I made this sort of washing line out of an electrical cable, so that's going to go in. And then some real ceramic tiles that I got when I did Miniatura. And I can't remember the name of the company now, but they do these actual ceramic tiles. And they're really nice. And I've just, well, I chipped that one anyway, so I'm going to leave, I'm going to use that one. You always see ceramic tiles, don't you, in messy sheds and things. And then I've also got this old tin of Mayfair chocolates which I've had in my collection for a long time. I'm not really sure where else to put it so I'm going to put that in the shed somewhere as well. But all of these little bits I'm going to try and display in this crate. And I've got another um, piece of newspaper here so I'm just sort of going to poke that in and have it hanging over the side just to create a little bit of fullness. And what I'll do is I'll just apply the glue to the inside of the crate. And I'm not going to think about this display too much. I just want to sort of chuck everything in as it sort of would be. Just sort of press that in like that. And fold it over. Crease it around the edge of the box like that. And then just put a little bit of glue underneath. that. 
I don't want that to look stuck flat, so I'm just sort of putting in a few creases. And I'll put a bit of glue around there as well. So that's beginning to fill up now. I actually want to have the tiles on the outside of the box, maybe propped up against it. So let's just see if we can get that in. And there's not actually anywhere for that to stick to, so what I'm going to do is just put a blob of tacky wax on. Put quite a big blob on like that. And then just push that into the box there. So I've still got a little bit of space in there, so I thought I could use this bit of white tube. I don't know where that's come from. I thought that might look like a piece of a pipe, you know, like overflow pipe or something. So I might, I'll just trim that down a little bit shorter, like that, and then that can be glued in as well, there, like that. So I just want to see how that looks in place. So let's just pop that in there. She doesn't go back any further because of the um, stair rods, but that looks quite good there. And then I just thought about having these tiles just sort of propped up against the front like that, and the chipped one at the front. So I'll actually glue those into place. So I glued those tiles to the front of the box, and then I've actually glued the box into place now. And then I found the little chipped off piece of tile, so I've glued that into place on the floor down there. Okay, so I've just added a few more bits and pieces. So the kitchen towel on top of the little screw tidy there. And that is a roll of brown paper, and I know that my husband uses that as masking paper when he's spray painting car parts and cars. So I've put that in there as a sort of link to the spray paint up there. And then I've just put a little roll of masking tape on the window ledge. And then a big um, roll of black tape there, which again I've seen in my husband's workshop, and he calls it electrical tape. So that's that, and a roll of bin liners behind it. And then I just want to show you here a few other pieces that I've found. So just another couple of bits I've had in my collection for ages and a little book with a cover on it called The Garden. And actually a little box of um, grass seed called Country Home Grass Seed. And I think I actually bought that as a flat pack set of labels and made those up into boxes because I've got quite a few of those. So I thought I'd do sort of a little bit of a garden section up the top there so I thought I could maybe just have the book on there and then stand the grass seed on top and then maybe I'll do like a little tray of earth here with something um, growing in it or maybe something not growing in it and then I've also made this little box here a Black & Decker cordless screwdriver I just printed off that picture of the front of the box and then I've cut some wood to size and I've just wrapped the paper around it. And I was thinking of sort of having that stood in there just as a bit of a backdrop to then what I ever, whatever I put sort of at the front here. But we'll definitely have a little seed tray there and then maybe some more sort of tool type bits here. Well, I'll get to work on those little gardening bits next. I'm going to start by making a little tray of seedlings. So really simple design, just like we'd make a drawer for a piece of furniture. So begin by applying glue along each edge of the base piece. If you're sort of doing a garden scene, you might want to do something larger. If your shed's going to be sitting in a garden and have them standing outside, that would be nice. I've always wanted to do a sort of garden, an outdoor garden scene or an allotment. I love the idea of sort of having, you know, rows of cabbages and cauliflowers and things like that. 
You're lucky if you've got room for a, a garden alongside your doll's house. Okay, so just let that dry off for a moment and then we'll attach the front and back pieces. Okay, so that's been drying probably for about a minute now because I went to find my plaster scene for the next stage. But you only need to really leave it for about 30 seconds. Just so it's sort of stable enough or sturdy enough for you to handle without it collapsing. Like that. Make sure you've got a nice sort of even box and make sure you've got flush edges along the sides. Although for this project I'm not too worried about that. I want it to look a little bit rough. It's probably sort of been knocked and battered about over the years in the shed. And if I were making a drawer for a piece of furniture, I would sand that once it's completely dry, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to leave it rough like that, rough edges, a little bit uneven around the top. And once that's dry, I'm going to apply a coat of oak coloured wood dye, just so it matches the shed a little bit better. As I'm going to be sticking this down onto the worktop, I'm not bothered about painting the bottom. So I've made a little masking tape handle to hold it with, which will make it easier to apply the wood dye. I've given the wood dye a good shake. And I'm just going around the inside because I don't want, when I've put the sort of plasticine earth in, for there to be any sort of natural wood showing through. sanded this at all like I say I'm not worried if it looks a little bit rough for this project like that. and then when you've got these little tabs on you can sort of just prop them up to dry like that that's now completely dried and I've got here some plaster seam and I've had this block for ages and although I've kept it in a tin, it has gone really dry. So I've just pulled a small piece off and I've been kneading this for quite a while and it's still quite hard. So I just want to line the seed tray with this. So I'll just pull a little bit off. Let's stick it in the base there. Press it down. It doesn't have to be really smooth or perfect or anything because we're going to actually be covering it with some scenic earth scatter but I just want to sort of line the tray so that it's almost up to the top so I don't want to have to put too much scatter in there I think I'll just put a tiny little bit more on top just smooth that out and then I've got here some scenic scatter and this is the earth um, and it's a dark brown colour but you could just use um, tea leaves if you go into the bottom of your tea canister I'm sure you'll find um, lots of tea leaves that you can use and just do exactly the same thing like this spread them out and press them down this stuff is so messy I should have probably put a bit of card on my um, worktop first and I could have just tipped it all off but never mind Got a thin covering on there. And then I've also got here some lichen. And this is also a scenic material. And I just want to create the effect that there are things growing in there. Now, I think because this is a natural material, it's all sorts of different um, shades. And it doesn't smell very nice actually. There's some bits of twig and things in there, which could come in handy. I just want to... See, some of this is actually a little bit discoloured, and that's the bits that I want to choose, just to make it look as though these whatever's been growing here is actually sort of withered, withered away. And what I'm going to do is take a cocktail stick and just, first of all, just make some holes into the plasticine. I've got a little bit of glue here as well, which I just want to put into the holes. Like that. And then I'm going to use this other cocktail stick just to poke that in there, 
like that. And that might be a little bit bushy, but you can always sort of trim them off if you're not happy with how it looks. A bit of glue into the next hole. Let's try and find another browny bit. And it doesn't even have to have a bit of the stem on it, you can just you know, you've got sort of bits with stems on and fluffy bits. You can just poke a bit of the fluffy stuff in. I probably will trim them up a bit because I don't want them to look like one big mass. I want them to look like separate plants. Okay, so I've used my smaller scissors just to trim that down a bit. So that just looks like a sort of dry, weedy mess now. And then I'll use the glue that I've got left on there to actually glue that into place inside the shed. I just want that to sit there like that. Hanging over the edge of the work table there. Press that down. And I'll just glue these into place around it as well. made some plant pots here using quilling paper and you'll find a tutorial for that in my book called Making Doll's House Miniatures in 112 Scale if you want to have a go at those. And this one I sort of pushed it a bit too hard onto the cocktail stick and pushed some of the paper out. So just trim off the bit that you push out and then use a little bit of glue just to stick the paper back into place and then I've had to use a paintbrush um, to go through the hole because it was too big for a cocktail stick. So I've just lodged that there to dry and I've got over here my watercolour paints and some water for when they're completely dry and I just used a terracotta coloured um, emulsion paint to paint those and then I'll use some green watercolour paints to add a bit of ageing to those and I'm going to sort of stand those about on the table over there and then I've just actually been onto Google Images, let me just turn you around a little bit there, and found some um, images of seed packets. So just go to Google Images, put in seed packets, and literally thousands of pictures come up. And I just chose one that was actually a um, sale item on Amazon, and it had 25 different seed packets. So I'm going to cut these out, and then I'll show you how I fold those. Not, not as a tutorial, but just um, so you can see what I'm doing, because <laughs> it's quite straightforward. Um, and then I'm actually going to make a little wooden tray to put those in, and that can stand on that work surface in there as well. So I'll do that now. Okay, so when you cut those out, you just want to leave a couple of millimetres top and bottom, and sort of half the packet size again at either side, and this isn't this hasn't got to be exact at all but if you've got a little bit to fold over at the top and bottom and then around to the back it makes it look more like a packet with something in it if you were just to cut out a piece of paper you can tell it it doesn't look um, solid enough if you see what I mean so I'm just using a ruler to make the creases again that's easier to get a, a square when you do it that way so just to make all those sort of folds. And then you want to use your small scissors to cut out each corner. And again, that's just so you haven't got a sort of bulky bit in each corner of the packet. And I'm sure some of you will be thinking, well, that seems a bit too much work for something so simple, but it does make a difference to the overall scene. It's like I always say to you, just spend a little bit of time on everything you put into your scene, 
and it will make all the difference and give it that real sort of look of reality. And I'm just folding over there the top and bottom flaps and then fold in the side flaps and you've got your little seed packet. And I think whether you've got um, Adobe Photoshop or not, you can edit photographs quite easily using Word or Excel if you've got those programs on your computer. And I keep threatening to do a tutorial about sort of editing, you know, things to make labels and seed packets and things like this using your computer and I promise I will get around to that but I'm getting a little bit anxious about the release of the book and because I've said it's going to be sort of August time I'm trying to stick to that but I'm I'm getting nervous that it won't be and I don't want to let anybody down so I want to get these out of the way before I move on to any more tutorials get all the shed projects out of the way and there's the first sort of little seed packet. So do that with all of your packets. And I'm going to be having having these in a couple of rows. So some of these you're not even going to see. But again, it's just that sort of little detail. You could just put pieces of paper at the back. And I may even do that depending on how full I want the tray to look, but I, I will still fold some pieces of paper. They just won't have the images on the front. And I've kept these images as well on my computer because when I come to do the potting shed, which will be the shed which is actually going to be featured in the book, I will use these as well some little trays of seeds and I'm really looking forward to doing that. I've been doing a little bit of um, research mainly on Google just putting in potting shed interiors and things like that and I've got some really really good ideas of things to put in it. Every, everything's going to sort of be lavender colour and have a lavender theme. Yeah, and I was just actually sort of snipping away there at the paper that I'd folded around. If you can see it coming over the top of the packet then just snip it away at an angle. Okay so that's all my little seed packets folded and then I want to make a little tray for them so I'm making it as wide as two seed packets like that and then four millimeters high so just over um, an eighth of an inch and exactly the same thing again as we made the sort of C tray you're just doing a base sticking the two sides to it and then attaching the front and back just like we'd make a, a drawer in a piece of furniture and I will stain this as well and then what I was saying earlier about showing you how to do seed packets and labels and all, all sorts of things like that for Doll's House miniatures. Um, it's so much cheaper than actually buying them because even just to buy um, some little seed packets would cost you know two or three pounds. So it's so much easier if you can do it yourself and I would urge you to as well because then you can spend that money on other things, on those things that you just can't make yourself. I'm actually saving up at the moment for, I'm sure you've heard of Stokesy Ware, they do some lovely 12th scale pottery and I'm saving up for the bread crock which I want to use in my doll's house kitchen and it's quite expensive, it's £30 but not really when you think about the amount of work that goes into it and how detailed it is, it really is a sort of, you know, fine miniature so there, simple little um, tray just to hold these seeds. And I'm just going to find my 5x5 five five strip just to push all that together. And because I didn't wait for the glue to dry, it's not quite as square as I'd like it to be. And obviously for a, um, a drawer or something that wouldn't work, but because it's for this shed I'm sort of excusing things like that all the time because it doesn't have to be perfect. 
but it'll do the job it'll hold these little seed packets so I'm going to leave that to dry obviously before I apply the wood stain and it's now two minutes to one so I think I'll go and get some lunch and then we'll come back and apply the wood dye to this and age up those plant pots so I'll see you in about half an hour is now dry so I just want to apply a little bit of glue into the base spread that around in there as best you can and then I'm just going to apply a little bit along that back edge as well and then I'm sort of going to start from front to back and just sort of prop them in behind one another. I'm just trying to think what I'd want at the front, but it doesn't really matter, they're all nice pictures on there. Those little pink ones. And you can put some of them a little bit sort of skew with. And they're sort of poking out at the side there, maybe. Use tweezers if that would be easier for you. Again, I don't want it to look neat because of the sort of theme of the shed. So just a little bit of glue on the bottom there. I just actually want that standing just right at the front. the worktop. Just very carefully press it down. That sun looks nice coming through the window there. It's lovely outside at the moment. So there like that. And then as well those um, flower pots are still drying. I've got here a pair of rubber wellies. Now these are a new um, line available in my Etsy shop and I've just been and tipped tea leaves in the bottom of the tea canister into this little glass jar and I just want to apply some around the base or around the foot of the welly. So just apply a little bit of glue. I just want to go sort of around the foot and a little bit on the heel. And then just dip it into your tea leaves. Of course you can use um, like a scenic material to do this. Use a scenic mud if you have that. I like tea leaves for this sort of thing because they're a lot finer. Trying to cover up all the glue there. Oops, so that's that one. You can just sort of tap it off on the edge of your container just to get rid of any excess. So I'll just pop that in the shed and then do the same with the other one. Again, you can leave them as they are. But it's just another one of those little details. And, mud, and wellies only look really clean when they're brand new, don't they? In fact, I haven't got a pair of wellies at the moment. They got um, part eaten in our shed by a mouse. 
So I need to buy a new pair. Good thing with these as well, because they're rubber, you can really sort of move them about in the pot. Squish them about. And I haven't put glue up the side, as you saw, but there are some sort of tea leaves sticking to the sides as well. And I'm going to leave them on there. Put that in the shed as well. The paint on the flower pots is now dry. And I just wanted to show you, it's really subtle. So you can layer that up a bit more, add a bit more colour if you like, once that first coat has dried. I'm going to leave them like that and I'm going to put them into place in the shed now. So carefully take the cocktail stick out. Once again apply a little bit of glue and then I want to put one behind there like that. Pressing it into place. I want to put some little tools or something in there and then these other two I'm going to stand here at the front of the packet of seeds I have one there like that and before the glue on that one has dried I'm going to see if I can just push that one in like that, laid down I'm sorry if my hand's in the way. It's I'm working in such a small area in here. I keep forgetting that the camera's there. I'll just press that down. So this little front one doesn't feel as though it's stuck properly yet, but the glue will take and that will stay where it's supposed to. But just pressing it down, I um, sort of pressed it out of shape a little bit. But I don't think you can see that from this angle. It's because the book that I'm sticking it to has got a sort of shiny surface. So that's those and I like how they look. I've just cut myself a piece of mesh from a sheet. And I wound it around the end of a paintbrush to put it into this shape. You don't need to glue it or anything, that will just hold. And then I'm using tacky wax to put this into place because obviously that won't glue. And then I'm just going to stick that into place at the side of that grass box there. It was just to create a little bit of height in that area where there wasn't really anything. And I'll have a think about what else I can put in there. Sort of coming up with ideas as I go along, but I thought that might look like a little bit of um, chicken wire or fencing wire or something like that. I'm just going to use my paintbrush pointer to show you what I've added. So I've added in a little ball of string, and that's just some fine string, which I tied into several knots just to get a centre, and then just wrap it around until you've got a nice sized ball of string. And then in the pot over here, I've just, just using paper, I've made some little seed markers. And then I've put a calendar up here, this picture of my husband's car. I printed the calendar um, again from Google Images and just resized it. And I just sized it to fit in this um, gap here in the wall. So that's about 20 millimetres or three quarters of an inch across there. And then I sized the calendar to the same size. And then I've made a number plate here with just some random numbers and the letters are LBP for little bits and pieces. And then I've made this really simple little um, tool here and it's when you plant seeds in a tray like that one you use, you use this then to flatten down the earth or the soil so it's just a piece of wood and then another little strip of wood on the top there to make the handle and then I've used the remainder of the tea leaves just to um, put a bit of soil on there again with a little bit of glue around the edge and I'm going to glue that into place over there. Now I just want to show you how to make a string marker. So take a cocktail stick 
and just cut it in half. And it doesn't have to be exact because we're going to be cutting some of that away as well. And I find it easier to cut if you sort of roll it along your work surface. And then we want to keep the pointed end because that's the part that would go into the earth. So just above the point where it sort of goes into a straight edge, apply a little bit of glue, just a quarter of an inch all the way around. And then take your string, or you can use cord or anything you've got. I want to just, I'm just trying to hold on to that end and then just start twisting that around. Just until you cover your glue. Like that. We'll trim that little bit off later. And then you want to pull some of the cord off. We say a couple of arm's lengths just to be on the safe side. Snip that off. Just pop that down for a moment. Bring in your other cocktail stick and same thing again. Apply glue to the straight bit. And then you want to wrap the other end of the string around. And something behind me just fell. I don't know if you heard that. I don't know what it was. So twist it around evenly like that. And then I want to have the same amount on each one. So I've got a bit more on that one now. So I'll go back to the original and wrap a bit more around. So I'm holding both of them now. I've got one in that hand and one in this hand. And I just want to wind the string so it's completely wound onto the two cocktail sticks so that they're roughly even like that and then you can lay them back down on your work surface and actually slip away the top of the cocktail stick so that you're leaving a, a millimetre or so above the string and then I just want to trim off those ends down there And then I'm actually going to use um, a little bit of tacky glue again in the middle of the pot, or in the bottom of the pot rather, where I'm going to stand them. So I just want to drop that tacky wax in there. And I just want to stick that in there. So I've got here a couple of little bottles that again I've been back to um, Google Images and found labels for them. And I've done a car shampoo over here and a organic garden spray over here and these little bottles I sell in packs of five and there's five different bottles I think they're sort of for a kitchen but I think that works perfectly as a little garden spray and that can just get away as being a bottle of um, car shampoo but there's also a, a little oil bottle I'll, I'll put a picture up to show you and you can purchase those in my Etsy shop and then you can just customise them with your own labels and I've got a pack that I'm going to be using in my doll's house kitchen and that will probably be a window cleaner or something like that in there. So I'm going to glue these into place as well. The little spray bottle has actually got a slight indentation at the bottom there so what I'm going to do is just again use a tiny little bit of tacky wax on the bottom there to stick that into place. And I want that up there on the window ledge, just to add a little bit of height over in that section. Oops. Again, I'm getting in your way. But I just want to press that down really firmly onto there. And then if any sort of tacky wax comes out, from underneath, just use a cocktail stick to remove that and you can just pop that back into your pot to use again and I'll do the same again with the little shampoo bottle I'll use a tiny little bit of tacky wax on the bottom and I'm going to put, oh, put this one over in that far corner making sure my label, oh, can't get hold of it, is facing forwards 
I want to put that just behind that bit of wire there. Just drop it down. Like that. And I'm trying to work quickly because my battery icon has just come on. Push that down into place. And again, that gives that a little bit more height over in that corner. Right, I think my battery's about to go, so I'll leave it there. So I've just made a few more um, bits and pieces, just as little fillers really for the window ledge and the shelving. And I haven't been able to film this morning because it's such bright sunlight out there, it's just cast in shadows over my um, desk. So I've sort of gone ahead and made the pieces and then I'll just show you what I've done. So I've been back online and printed off some little labels and things. This is a little um, box of nails label, you can't read it there, it's too small, but that's a box of nails and I've just made a little white box um, to glue that on. That's going to sit on the window ledge. Same thing again, I did um, a little box of uh, carpet tacks and I've just used my manila card here to make a little box for those. And you can find the manila card on my, or in my Etsy shop rather, in the other materials section. And then I've used a brown paper bag here to make a bag of potting soil. So I just shaped the paper into a cylinder glued the bottom, filled it with sesame seeds just to give it a bit of weight, put a sticker on the front and then I've actually used a green fabric there to make the top and bottom like that sort of cord you sometimes see on products that come in sacks. So that was that. And then I've just made um, a little tin, I can't even remember what this was actually, multi-purpose grease. <laughs> and then just glued that around a piece of dowel and then made a top and bottom from some aluminium sheet make it look like the lid on there tiny little piece of dowel which I've used um, a coloured pencil to colour in the lid there and again a little spray can of something um, machine oil I think I mean you, you really can just go on to Google Images and find pictures of just about anything so just have a think about things that might be in an old garden shed and I promise I will get around to doing that um, video about making labels and things and then I've done used the same sort of technique I did to make my wood dye tins so I've just wrapped the label here around a piece of 2.5 mil wood put a piece of aluminium on the top and bottom just a little square and then made a little lid out of a cocktail stick Again, you'd coloured pencil just to make that look white. I think that's called duck oil. I'm not sure what that's for. But I was just putting in things like oil and grease and lubricant and things like that. And you'll find no end of these sort of little products. And then this one I did know what to search for because my husband's got a tin of this down in his workshop. And it's the old castrol oil tin. Again, wrapped it around a piece of 3mm sheet bit of metal on the top and bottom and a little lid again and I'm just going to go ahead and just sort of dot these around in the spaces and then what I did inside let me just refocus just get my pointer I just glued this piece of hesse in here to the worktop look like an old sack or something like that and that's just really to fill out an area of the worktop and then I can glue these new pieces sort of around it have a few more pieces on the window ledge and things like that. So I'll go ahead and glue them in place and then I'll show you how that looks. I've glued all of those pieces into place now. Just sort of dotted them about. A couple of bits on the window ledge down here on the worktop. That bag of potting soil has filled a nice area at the back there. And then I've glued the little spray can up here. And then I made this roll of cleaning cloth and again, that's something else that's in my husband's workshop, this huge roll, it's probably about really a foot in diameter. So the lines there are out of scale, but I still thought that looked quite nice up there. So a few more spaces still to fill. I'd like to get a little bit more on here, maybe a few more um, gardening products. But I think I'll leave it there for now. I feel like I've been going on for quite a while, but I will get on with the next video more or less straight away and we'll then um, make some pieces to go on this table over here and also on the back of the door and I've had an idea about 
doing an old um, overall to hang on the back of the door there and perhaps an old shopping bag or something like that and anything else really that I think of um, as I'm doing it. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, it was more of a sort of tips and inspiration video than a tutorial, as they're all really simple little things to make, all things that you could quite easily do yourself. But sometimes it's difficult to think of sort of what to do when you're faced with a large area to cover. It can be difficult coming up with ideas, so I hope I've helped you here. And even sort of when I came back to this to try and finish it off, when I first sort of sat down and looked into the shed and all that empty space, I thought, what am I going to put in there? I, I haven't got a clue. But as soon as you sort of start, you just start coming up with ideas. And it's quite interesting, really, because I was just looking at um, Instagram last night and there's a lady um, called Ara who I really like and her YouTube channel is called Bentley House Miniatures. And she'd put a post on, a, a photograph actually, of her just sort of sitting in front of her doll's house and just looking at it, just to come up with some ideas and inspiration. And I commented back that I do that as well, and usually with a cup of tea. And I think that really does help. Just sit down in front of your project, you know, have a pen and paper handy if you want, um, just to jot some ideas down. But just looking in there and thinking, what can I put there, will really help you and you'll come up with lots of ideas. So, like I say, I'll get on with that next video straight away. I'll probably make a start later today. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Sorry if I've waffled on for a bit too long. I'll keep it as short as I can when I'm doing the editing. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.